Hey everyone, welcome to the channel, All Things Middle Earth here with a video looking at four secret in-game mechanics that can 100% change the effectiveness you and your commanders have in this game. So stay tuned, we're going to get into all those in just one second. <laughs> Okay, so for this list, I'm going to have uh, videos that explain in more detail uh, these different topics linked down below, some of my own, some of other creators. Uh, and just to start off right away, I'm going to jump into the first one, which is the order in which you put skill points onto your commanders in their skill trees affects the order that they get used in battle. So depending on what order you put skill points on your commanders, that's what order they'll get used in in certain, certain situations. Now, the reason that uh, got me thinking about this video and trying to get a place where these, where these ideas were compiled together uh, it's because Chisgul just posted a video about this uh, idea, uh, and the example he gave was for Aomer and Marshall of the Mark with Cleave, where they both have a round two cooldown timer. So if you you know if you don't know, you might just think it's random or you don't know how these things uh, determine what gets used. But in, in situations where they would go off at the same time, uh, d you know they can't literally go off at the same time. One will go first. So the one that goes first is the one that is skilled into first. So if I put points into Marshall of the Mark and then put points into Cleave, Marshall of the Mark will go first. And in this situation, it's very important because Marshall of the Mark gives Aomer 100 speed for one round, and Cleave gets extra damage dealt. Uh, it's, it's modified by the speed stat. So if you have more speed, you're going to do more damage. So it's a win-win situation here where Marshall of the Mark should absolutely go, be going first. Uh, but again, I saw that video and this idea, which I had been aware of for a while. A lot of these things have been around for a long time in the game. None of them are brand new. But it just made me realize there are always new people playing this game, and sometimes this information is not super clear. Again, I think they should probably put some kind of information thing somewhere that you know says skills you know that would go off at the same time are determined by which you stat into first. I feel like it'd be very easy to put that in like a little informational thing. Maybe they will down the road, but for now we don't have it. And if you are just putting random points in, even if you look up a build and find out what you know the best build for someone is, you might accidentally be putting points into the wrong places, which is in turn going to be making your commanders a little, a little bit less effective. So. Definitely take a look at commanders. Make sure that you don't have any skills that are kind of clashing like that. It's kind of situational. And again, this video is not going to break down every every single commander and, and what their skill order should be. Uh, if it's something you'd be interested in seeing in the future, we'll definitely consider working on that. Uh, but I'm going to link his video down below. And I'm going to link a video either by myself or by someone in the community uh, for each of these four topics we're going to be covering. So check that down below if you want some more information on any of these uh, single points. But again, it's very important you at least make sure you're aware at what uh, what order you're putting your skill points in. Again, for some commanders, it may not matter as much, but for some, it could have some pretty big implications. So definitely keep an eye on that. Number two is that putting points into control is going to reduce the amount of time it takes for you to regen ability points. So if you start out, it's about one hour and 12 minutes and uh, some seconds for each ability point to regenerate. So every hour and 12 minutes, you're going to get another ability point. And once you get enough of those, uh, you can do different things within the game again. As the game goes on, they're going to keep adding stuff for ability points, I assume, because they added, you know, Quick March in Season 2, for example. So as they keep adding more stuff, if they do, uh, ability points are going to become even more and more uh, valuable. And something about it, if you click on the control ability, there's nothing here that talks about the time being reduced, but it's been tested and proven for a long time that it is how it works. And I made a video on this actually quite a while ago now, uh, where once you go into control 10 times, you reduce the time from about uh, an hour and 12 minutes to about 48 minutes flat. So you're saving a lot of time per ability point. And in that video, I break down some different math of like how much extra resources that could equal depending on what skill tree you go into. But bottom line, more ability points are going to be better for you, uh, kind of regardless of what you end up using it for, whether you're gathering or mock battling, maybe you are doing quick marching or long marching or whatever. The more you're going to have those, the better. And the longer you wait to go into control, the more points you're kind of wasting because every time you have a point go that takes longer, uh, that's just really, you know, more you could have gotten if you would go into control. So definitely consider going to control. It's usually one of the first skills I go into. Um, obviously, you have to wait till you're a high enough level to go into these. I can't remember exactly what the ring level is. Uh, so you can go into other abilities until you get to that point. But as soon as I'm able to, I usually try and go into control because I think it's a very good ability. And again, they probably should just have something on here that says that there's a max that it's, it's not even a max level effect that just per level, it reduces the time for ability points to regen. Uh, it's just a percentage every time. But Again, we don't have that right now, so something I wanted to make everyone aware of if you were not already. All right, and number three is that when you set armies to guard on a tile, armies that are set to guard will be attacked before armies that are not set to guard. And so that's kind of a mouthful, but very, very simply put, you can use this as a means uh, at specific choke points like tunnels and crossing. And there are some uses for it even outside of areas like this where you can just kind of understand who's going to be hit. 
uh, and kind of keep your stronger commanders, maybe maybe helping out your weaker commanders. But if you pile up commanders next to a crossing or a tunnel and you set them all to guard and then you start getting attacked, as your commanders are getting attacked, after they get hit one time, if you turn off guard, you can start reinforcing them and ensure they're not going to be hit when they're at less than full strength. And then the commanders that do get hit will be at full strength. And so it's going to be a harder time for the enemy attacking. Again, this goes more in part to the game strategy than actual like game mechanic that isn't aware. But if you haven't done a ton of PvP or been involved in a fellowship or a warband that's like had a discord and coordinated with things or, you know, really just told you to do this and told you what, how it works, you might be unaware of it. So it's just something I thought of. Uh, that'd be worth mentioning. So again, if you are trying to hold down a tunnel or a crossing, even if it's just by yourself, if you have four or five armies here, uh, after one army gets hit, you don't have to let them keep getting hit until they're knocked out because obviously the second, third, and you know so on times are going to be a lot weaker. You know, I could use an example. I just got uh, my Boromir just got attacked uh, randomly. Uh, so right here, it actually looks like they sent in a scout to see. So that's another great tactic that I sent a scout in to see what I had here with my Boromir. Just had some of these uh, cataphracts with him. So they sent someone in that he didn't really take any losses here. Uh, but after this loss, he, he lost about half here. Hypothetically, if I had had him set to guard um, and there was someone else in the tile with him, let's say I had another commander, maybe I had my own Gandalf the Grey here. Uh, if I would turn the guard on Gandalf the Grey and turn guard off of my Boromir, then my Boromir would not get hit again until that Gandalf was gone. And so basically, instead of my Boromir being hit and knocked out because he only had a, you know an army at half strength here, it would have hit another one of my armies that would have been at full strength, uh, which could have allowed me to, to hold out here longer. Now, in this situation, I didn't actually have armies stacked up there, uh, but if I had been more actively playing in that PvP scenario, you could even use Guard in those situations to try and keep your weaker commanders, your commanders that maybe have already been hit, uh, from being hit and knocked back again before you can reinforce them. So again, that is Guard cycling, and it is a very, very... Uh, good tactic to be using in PvP. And last but not least, I want to talk about XP farming. Now, this is something that is, again, just kind of in that more strategy or tactics category. It's not necessarily a game mechanic, but if you've not done it, it's probably, it, it could be something that you haven't thought of before. And so very simply put, you can attack different neutral unit camps. So I have the Ents here. The Ents are a very popular one because they're not amazingly strong. And with certain army compositions, they can be taken out very easily. But you're going to get all the XP from taking out two level 50 armies, uh, which is, you know, again, the difficulty wise, the same as a 300 power land. Uh, but you can take all these armies out. And I believe the timer for these is one hour after you attack for them to refresh. So basically, if you go in, take out both armies, you get all the XP, and then an hour passes, you can attack and just do that over and over again. So you can send commanders with a fort next to these different areas and have them just repeatedly every hour knock out the armies and have them come uh, back every time and you can keep getting XP. The advantage of doing this is that you know what the army is going to be every time so you can have the best counter for them. And obviously with stuff like these 300 power lands, ideally you want these things producing resources for you. So it's probably not the best uh, if you're earlier game to be dropping resource tiles over and over again to claim them. Uh, and then again, you know, there's a good chance that someone else might just snatch it up. But for some of these especially, it's kind of widely known that they are used for XP farming. So I did this on some some of the Barrow Whites recently, some of the uh, some of the Ents in, in previous servers I've done this on. You can really do this on any of the hireable units in the game. Uh, some are just probably going to be better than others, depending on how easy. Uh, I've, I've heard people using Eagles and Fell Beasts as well. Again, once you get the proper counters for these, since they're full Eagle or full Fell Beast armies, they're very weak to ranged units. So you can go set up next to those to their layers and just continually farm XP. Again, you do need to be high enough because if you bring in a level 12 commander, they're going to get smashed. So this isn't the same as mock battling. But sometimes when mock battling slows down at level 42 to, four, to 50 or whatever, you could do some uh, EXP farming on different hireable unit camps and really make up some of that ground a lot faster. So again, this is just a quick list meant to hopefully refresh you on some things or hopefully show you some new things. So again, let me know down below if any of these were a surprise to you. And let me down below if you have some other things you think I should put into a video as well for like a part two of this. Uh, because again, we do have new people playing this game and this game is more enjoyable when you're doing better. Uh, and so if these things are things you did not know, uh, hopefully it's going to help you have a better experience in your server. But that's going to do it for me in this one and I'll see you all in a future video. <laughs>